Thank you for joining me on my AT After Dark channel. I just wanted to go over uh, a little bit more into the Simple Jack, just kind of how it came about in my own words, uh, a little bit of the my thought, my philosophy with it. And eventually, as this goes on, I'm just gonna, you guys are gonna see me shooting with it. Uh, now, the one that's closest to you, this is what I would call the prototype of the Simple Jack. This did start off as a patrol SL is. Uh, ever since I became involved with Sons of Liberty, uh, one of the first rifles that I picked up was a Patrol SL because uh, I saw the inherent value in it. I saw, uh, you know, it's, you know, if you can do it with that, you can do it with the other stuff that they have. Um, now, when you go to a show, like say NTOA, SHOT Show, things like that, uh, TTPOA, LTPOA, MTOA, uh, when Sun shows up to those shows, you know, those guys bring their personal guns. They're, they are real world guns that are very lived in, very used. Uh, they are set up with all the enablers, all the accessories. And, you know, when guys come and see them, they can pick them up and they can be like, okay, man, like this, this is a real gun. I can really see what you're talking about. Uh, and then there would be like a patrol SL off to the side um, with nothing on it, like no light, no optic, no sling. And I just kind of felt like, let's do something about that. So I was like, you know, let me get one of those and I'm going to start running it and give you my thoughts. And in a previous video, like I said, I, the first thing I got was this Hollow Sun 403 on Amazon shipped to the house. It comes with its own lower one third riser. Uh, I changed that eventually, but you know, like I said, put a light, put a sling, put an optic on it. I eventually went with the Unity riser because I knew that I was going to be putting the HRF skiff on it as well uh, to put lasers just to show what it is that you could do with this. So this was a standard patrol SL, optic, light, sling, put the HRF mag wall on there. And honestly, before that, the first thing I put on was the MBT trigger just because it's, it's such a great value it's hard to pass up and just for me as far as I feel like with accuracy for most people uh, it really starts in the shot process with the trigger I mean there's a lot of body position there's a lot of mechanics obviously that's involved uh, but for me I think a trigger will take you further than a rail that's just my opinion now also because I got love for the streets okay uh, whether whoever you are, what your job is, regular dude, you might be the police, deputy, whatnot, right? You might not have a lot of money. You're like, what should I get? What should I do? Well, if you're not messing with night vision, you actually don't need a rail because rails are the way that they are. The design that they are is based around maintaining zero for your laser aiming module. So when you're using night vision, and because guys weren't really passive aiming yet or doing any of that stuff. So when you have your night vision and you use your laser, you need that to maintain zero. So that's how like rail design happened in the last 20 years. Uh, so they could be super rigid and maintain the uh, zero of a laser, but then they got a little heavy. Some of them got back light again, didn't maintain the zero too much. Then they came back again. Somebody came over the top with new materials they're constantly working on it. But if you don't have to mess with any of that, it's okay to get a uh, front sight post gun with a tr more traditional handguard uh, because most folks don't need their light to be zeroed. They just need their light to be on there so they can identify. Um, so that kind of gave me the idea of going like, hey, we want you to do your kind of own special rifle. Like what would it be? I just kind of want to start where I felt they could help the most amount of people. The original Simple Jack, the uh, prototype Simple Jack, I started on a lower nine receiver just because they're, I just felt they were the most sterile receiver, uh, pretty plain Jane. However, uh, with the production Simple Jack, I decided to go with the Rebellious Stripes lower because I understand that there's a lot of people uh, when they were 11, they turned 13 because they don't fuck with 12. I'm not going to begrudge them that. I felt that the Rebellious Stripes receiver uh, kind of represented everybody. 
So I want everybody to feel included and that's why I made that change. So with this simple jack, the production simple jack, I didn't want to just sit around and just kind of have like this pristine gun that I haven't set up. Um, I wanted to set up a, a real production simple jack and put my money where my mouth was. So I went around the house and this is kind of like how I would recommend it to somebody that was just starting out. Like talk to your podnas that might have some spare gear that you might be able to swap. Uh, luckily I had extras around. So Magpul cantilever mount, old uh, Surefire uh, Scout, the 300. Uh, not that I recommend that over anything else, just what I had extra on hand. And, you know, clicky cap, you know, no need, no need to complicate it yet with a tape switch doesn't mean I'm against that. It's just keeping it simple. Uh, Gray fighter sling. He's a homie of mine. He sent me a sling. So luckily I had a spare sling on hand and put it on here. It's been working out great. Comp F2 and a, and a LaRue mount. I mean, it, that, that's some peanut butter and jelly level of synergy that has been around for a while and is proven. They have other stuff out now, but uh, luckily I had this bad boy on hand. So this is a very, very simple, uh, but very rugged, very usable and very realistic setup. Now, I've been seeing people's comments. I try not to live in the comments, but a lot of people have uh, saying like, well, this is overpriced or I could get this for this money and that for that money. And I bet you can't though. I bet you can't. Um, for me, and as far as my relationship, that any relationship that you see me having with a lot of people or organizations or companies, those are filled with people. And most of the time my relationships really are with people and I'm loyal to people. And the dudes that build these guns, the armorers that build these guns are real dudes. And I know every single one of them. And I know the pride and the dedication that they take into building these guns, whether they're like a high-end, super cool gun, or they're a patrol SL, or maybe a little bit higher, like the next tier above these simple jacks. Like, I know they give a shit. I know they give a shit. You know, when somebody has a lethal force encounter, be that uh, a private citizen, police, and it's a good shoot, and you send them the receipt, and they say, hey man, I need this I need this gun while my gun is in evidence. You know, I don't know if you guys know that about Sons of Liberty, like they do that. And those guys, they wanna know who built the gun. And it's not for some like misguided bloodlust, like, oh, I got bodies. It's like, no, they wanna know that when they showed up to work, whenever they showed up to work and they built that gun and it went out to somebody that they did not know that on the worst day of their life, the gun that they built did not fail that person because they give a shit. I don't know who's building your gun somewhere else. I don't know those people. I don't know if they're professionals. I don't know what they're getting paid. I don't know how much they care. I don't know if that means anything to you, but it means something to me. Okay. And that's the confidence that I have in these guns because of those dudes. I don't know if you can put a price on that, I don't know how you quantify that, but it means something to me. All right, guys, have a good one.